Yes, the Apple loops here in GarageBand on our iPhone or iPad are a great way to build a track, but sometimes they can sound a little bit the same. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can chop up, cut up, reverse, split, and do a whole bunch of cool things to our Apple loops here in GarageBand. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. Now, Apple Loops are awesome and they're a great way to start your track. You can get some great sounds, but if there's one criticism I have of them is that they are quite similar in that they'll be the same tone, they'll be the same rhythm. It can be a little bit boring after a while. So let's spend some time showing you how we can chop up these samples and loops and create our cool, custom, unique sound. Let's jump in now. All right, we're here in a brand new track because we want to start from scratch here. I'm going to tap on the audio recorder option here and I'm not going to actually record a sound, but I am going to tap on the track view in the top left corner here and then we'll tap on our loops icon, which is this one up here in the top right. We'll tap that and jump into our loops browser. If you haven't used Apple Loops before, I've got a quick jam video showing you all about that, but we'll cover most of it in this video. And the exact same method is going to work on your iPad or your iPhone. So you can follow along with me if you're on an iPhone as well. We're here in our loops now because we've got this brand new pack called prismatica let's just search for some of these samples and use these in our song here so here we've got a bunch of beats we've got some guitars we've got some hi-hats some horns some pianos some bass we've got a whole bunch of stuff here this isn't the whole pack but this is some of the samples and loops that we have here so let's start by adding in a loop and then we'll show you some of the cool things we can do so the basics of using apple loops is that we're just going to tap to sample first so there's our loop, we can tap a different loop. And tap again to turn them off now. We'll just grab this one to start with, we'll tap it and we'll hold it and drag it over here into our project. So now we've got this beat in our project. If we hit play, We've got that sound. Now I'm just going to turn the volume down because that's a pretty aggressive beat that we have on that one and I don't want to blow, blow your ears off here. So that's all cool and we can just use these loops. But what you'll see here is that this is an, a four bar loop that's just been looped completely. If we want to bring this back to just its four bars, we grab the end handle here and bring it back. And now we've just got a four bar loop that's just going to go along like this. So that's pretty cool, but we will loop it just to have a little bit of a background here. So to, to re-loop it, we tap it, we tap it again, and we tap on loop, and there you go. It's gonna loop the whole sample. So that's uh, the simplest way to start building out your track. But now, let's do some of the cool funky stuff. We'll tap on loops again here, and let's grab something a little bit different. So we'll grab a piano chord, shall we? That sounds pretty cool. Tap it and hold it, bring it on into our track, drop it in there, and then we've got... So we've got a couple of sounds that sound good together in a loop here, but we want to do something a little bit different here. What if we want only a part of this? So we only want... What if we only want that first section here and we don't want the rest of this? Well, no problem. We can actually split this up and start chopping up this loop. So we're gonna grab the loop here. We're gonna tap on it. We're gonna tap split. We get our little split icon here and all we need to do is slide down like that. And that's gonna split this into two audio parts. We don't want this part. So we'll tap it, tap it again, tap delete. That's gone. So now we've only got... We've only got that one part, and this is something that we're now going to start playing with and manipulating to make this song a very different kind of sound. So the first thing that we can do here is that we can actually reverse our sample. So for this one, it might sound a little bit weird, but let's just try it. We'll go in here, we'll tap settings, we'll tap on reverse, and then the sample's actually reverse now. So let's hit play. And yeah, you can hear it's a funky kind of different sort of sound. We probably wouldn't use something like that in this track, but I wanted to show you that because simply reversing a sample is probably the easiest way to get a completely different sound. We'll tap the undo button to reverse that back to our, our original sample. And then let's look at some other things we can do. We'll tap it, we'll tap it again, and we'll tap on settings. And now we can adjust a whole bunch of things here right in our settings. So we've got looping that we can turn on 
and turn back on again if we want to loop that sample over and over again. Our follow tempo and pitch is on here, which means if we change the key of our song, it will actually change the key of these Apple loops, which is pretty cool. We can transpose up and down a number of semitones. We've got our reversing option that we've already done there, and we've got our speed. So there's some cool things in here that we're going to show you in a few different uh, samples and loops here. But the first one I wanted to use is the semitones and transposition. So let's take a look at that now. Now to demonstrate this, what I actually want to do is I'm going to create some more copies of this. So I'm going to show you some copying and pasting here. So we're going to tap on this, we're going to tap again, we're going to go copy. And then what we can do is let's at the start of each bar, put another copy of this exact sample across these first four bars. So I'm just tapping in each place, I'm driving over here, tapping, hitting paste. So we've got four of the same sample. So if we play this right now, It's the same again and again, but what if we want to vary this up and kind of change what sort of key we're in here? So what we can do is grab this one, tap it, hit our settings, and now what if we wanted to take this up? Let's just say we wanted to take it up five semitones here. So we'll do the same with this one just to get a bit of consistency, or maybe we'll even, let's just try something funky. Let's go up seven semitones there. So you can experiment with this sort of stuff and see what works for you. Even if you don't know about music and tones and semitones, you can just experiment and have some fun. So let's hit play on this one now. There's our original samples, and there it is. So we can actually manipulate the actual sounds, the tones that we're actually hearing there. So if we wanted to do it differently, let's say we wanted to go down, we can tap, tap again, go settings, and this time, what if we wanted to actually bring it down, say two semitones, and then we'll tap this one, and we'll do the same again, we'll bring it down three semitones to create a really different, unique sound. Let's try this now. Yeah, not bad. That last one I probably wouldn't do just there. I'd probably actually bring this all the way down another bit here. Let's try that again. Yeah, cool. So I'm, I'm liking that. So what I might do is I'll copy that and I'll paste this section. So I'm gonna copy all three of these. You can see I just dragged over the whole lot to copy them. We're gonna tap here, we're gonna tap again and paste. And now we've got that repeating. So we've got our eight bar pattern and we've chopped up this sample and we've got all these different bits here that we can actually use, which is pretty cool. Let's jump in now and show you some of the other options we have here in our Apple Loops. All right, we briefly covered the reverse effect, but let's show it where it might actually be more useful. So let's come in here. I'm gonna grab one of these arpeggios. Let's try this one here. Okay, that's sounding pretty cool. Let's grab this and throw this in our track and see if we can use this as a bit of a transition here between these two sections. So we'll unloop it by dragging this back. And if we come in here, we want it to kind of just use this part to transition between these two. Let's see how it times out here. All right, I've got that early. I actually wanted it down here. So let's pop it about there and hit play. Now that's pretty cool, but what if we wanted this to be a bit more like a reverse swell effect? Well, what we can do is we can tap this, go to our settings, and then we can tap on reverse. And now this sample is actually gonna be reversed. Let's take a listen now. Yeah, cool. But what we wanna do is just position this so that it crescendos right at this point. So we're just tapping and holding and dragging, and we'll make it crescendo right there, which just means reach its loudest point. Come back to here, hit play. Yeah, not bad. So we might just sort of play around with that and get it in just the right position. But you can see there that reversing a sound, especially something that's like a one-shot sample like that, can be a really cool way to get a different kind of sound and a different kind of feel. What if we actually wanted this to do the same thing, but much quicker? No problem, we can do our speed adjustment. So we'll tap it, we'll tap settings, and this time we're gonna use the speed adjustment. What if we make this four times as fast? It's gonna come straight in here. Now we'll need to adjust this. Let's bring it forward so that we can put it back on our transition point. We'll try it around about there, I reckon, like that. And let's come back and hit play. Yeah, so it's a little bit quick there. Let's uh, try that again, tap it, settings. What about two times the speed? And again, just readjust it by tapping it, dragging it, and let's try this again. 
yeah, so once we build out the track and we have other options there, we can try different things. But the point here is that you can experiment. You don't have to be stuck with just what is given to you in these samples. We can chop them, we can use just parts of them, we can reverse them, we can adjust the speed to really create a custom sound. And of course, we can transpose them so that we've got those different notes that each loop is playing, which is the power of Apple Loops here in GarageBand. Okay, let's add a couple of additional ones here because we need some bass. All right, we're gonna throw this bass in here. We'll tap it, we'll drag it, we'll drop it in here. Now, when we have a bass in here like this, it's not gonna line up with some of our other tones because we've changed some of these. Let's just play it out of the box and see what it sounds like. So what we can do, we can either follow this along by doing the same tone adjustments or we can you know, just adjust it and, and do different things here if we want to. So you do have to then take a little bit more care once you've actually done something like this because you will need to adjust your other loops. So we'll do the same here. Let's just show this again. We'll split it. We'll tap this one here. We'll delete that second section. And what we'll do is we'll actually uh, grab this one. We'll split it there as well. We'll copy the first part again. Again, you can see how flexible this can be. We'll paste in here. And let's just see if we can get this lined up with the right sort of tone. So what did we do on this first one? We'll just go to our settings. We went down to semitones. Well, what if we do the same here? We go to settings and we go down to semitones. What is this gonna sound like here? I think that's gonna work okay. And then we just need to do the same here again. So we're gonna grab this one here. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna paste it in here. We're gonna tap it, tap it again, settings. And this time we're gonna go down, where do we go? About five semitones, I think. Again, we can come back here to check. Yep, so let's listen to these last couple of sections. Yeah, so that's okay. We probably just don't want this last note there. So we can just take that one off and we're good to go. Now, because we're repeating, we tap out here, we copy over, we tap, we tap again, we copy, and then we come to here. So the beauty part of this is that unlike everyone else who is using the Prismatica synth base 01, yours is not gonna sound like everyone else's because you're not just throwing the loop on and leaving it the same. You're gonna chop it up, cut it up, reverse it, split it, do all sorts of things to make it unique and to make it your own. And that's the good thing about loops. People criticize loops because they're all the same and they can get boring, not if you do some of this stuff. And we haven't even touched any effects yet. That's a whole topic for another discussion. But before we finish up here today, I've got one next level bonus bonus tip that I think you're gonna love. So let's jump into that now. So for this one, we're going to come in here. Let's grab a different sound. I saw some horn stabs here. So let's try this one. They're all pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much. All right, we'll just tap this and drag it across here and throw in our horns. So what I'm gonna do in this time is what if I, instead of wanting this particular melody, I wanted to sample one of these horn stabs and bring it back in in the sampler. We can do it and it's super easy and let's show you how now. So what we'll do, we let's say we want just this first one here. We're gonna tap here, we'll tap, and this time we're gonna go trim. And that way we can just trim off the front of that sample like that. We're gonna do the same again with the end of it. We're gonna tap, we're gonna tap, tap again, and we'll hit trim. And this time, if we scroll to the end, we can trim back the sample, zoom in, zoom in, trim back the sample to be that much. Let's get rid of all this excess because we don't need it to loop. So we're gonna tap it, we're gonna tap again, settings and turn looping off. So now all we have, if we solo this, is this one horn stab. So it's just gonna be a meh. So it's one horn stab that we've got there. What we can now do, let's just bring this to the very start of our project, like so. And you might be ahead of me here, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna export this sample and then bring it back in using the sampler so we can play it using our keyboard. Yes, it's very cool, let's do it now. So a couple of steps here. First thing we need to do is export this song. So we're gonna to go to my songs and it'll just be my song number two here at the moment. Let's just rename that real quick. So we'll rename this as loops and it done just so that we know what to look for when we come back. Now I'm just gonna tap select. I'm gonna tap on this one and I'm gonna tap share down here in the bottom left corner. So now I'm actually gonna share this as a song. So we'll tap on song and we'll share it as an uncompressed wave file. Let's hit share in the top right corner here. 
Now, what it's going to do is it's going to ask me where I want to save this out to. Now, if it doesn't say save to files, if it says open in, hit that button first and then you'll get the save to files option. But let's hit save to files now. It's going to export the song. But remember, we've only got that one sample here soloed. So it's only exporting that one sample that we've actually done. So we'll wait for this to finish exporting. It's done that now. Where do we want to save it? Well, we want to go to on my iPad and under GarageBand and then GarageBand file transfer. If you're on an iPhone, it will be on, on my iPhone. Then we're gonna tap add. And there we go. It has saved that into our GarageBand file transfer folder. Let's hit done and we're good to go. So we'll go back into loops now and we'll unsolo that one. We won't even actually need this. In fact, we'll, we'll uh, solo, not solo, we'll mute that one out. And now look up the top here. We've got a little blue one next to our loop icon. So let's tap on our loop icon now and look in here, along with the other things that I've imported here, we've got loops.wave. So we can tap on this and it's just that stab. So that's all it is there. So we could bring this in, no problem. We can bring this as a, as a loop and it's just gonna be that sound. But we don't wanna do that, that's boring. We wanna use this in our sampler. So what we wanna do is tap the plus button down the bottom left here to create a new track. This time we're gonna scroll across to our keyboard instruments and we wanna select the sampler. We'll tap on sampler and then we can import using the button in the top right here. We'll tap import, we'll tap on loops. That's the one we want. And then we hit the import button over here on the right. So there it is. Now, because we exported eight tracks, we've got all this excess, but no problem. We'll just drag that back to make sure that we're only playing this. And now, Yes, we can play this using our keyboard sound. So if we wanted to, let's uh, just listen to the track and make sure it sort of sits right. So now if we hit the record button, we should be able to play along. Now I don't know what notes to play here, so it's probably gonna sound terrible, but let's just give it a try here. And we can. That was just awful. So you get the point here though. I probably should have picked a better instrument that was a little bit more in tune, but yeah, you can now actually add these in and we could come in here and we could edit this part. So it's just a MIDI instrument now, MIDI virtual track that we can actually edit. So if we solo that in here now, we'll just come down here, solo that one. And again, yeah, you would probably wouldn't use exactly that one. I should have sampled a guitar or something, but you can see here that it's so powerful that we can sample in anything that we're using there. If we're using the, the virtual loops here, the Apple loops, we can sample any instrument, any sound, and then bring it back in and use it in the sampler. And that way you get a really different custom kind of track here in GarageBand. So there you go. I hope you found this useful and you got some ideas that are going to help you in your next GarageBand track. If you'd like to check out more about creating in GarageBand, there's two more videos linked right down below. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking and tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I'll see you on the next video.